They're tiny, they're toony, they're all a little loony. They're the Tiny Toons. Spawning in the early 1990s as the first collaboration between Warner Brothers and Steven Spielberg, Tiny Toon Adventures went on to become one of the most popular and critically lauded cartoons of the era, helping spawn a Looney Tunes renaissance for the new generation. In 2023, after nearly 35 years of existence, the Tiny Toons return in a brand new revival series. And to celebrate, I'll explore the history, inception and development of the original series and its jettison into the 21st century. Come and join the fun in this edition of Cartoon Evolution. By the mid-1980s, Steven Spielberg was one of the most influential filmmakers in Hollywood. Following a string of gigantic successes, which ushered in a bold new era of blockbuster filmmaking, Spielberg gracefully shifted between genres, but found a knack for crowd and investor-pleasing family entertainment. As such, then Disney studio chief Jeffrey Katzenberg tasked him to help save their ailing animation division, believing him to be the only person up for the task. Katzenberg relinquished complete creative control over the film, an ambitious animated live-action hybrid set in the 1940s. With director Robert Zemeckis, Spielberg brought Who Framed Roger Rabbit to the big screen, winning four Oscars and taking the number one spot at the 1988 box office. Roger Rabbit helped make Disney the year's most successful studio and softly launched their animation renaissance. Spielberg additionally spearheaded three short spin-offs, Disney's first theatrical cartoons in over 15 years. Over at Warner Brothers, a similar effort was underway to revitalise the Looney Tunes, who had been languishing on television following the release of the last theatrical cartoons in 1969. Classic cartoons were compiled and repurposed into The Bugs Bunny Show and a sporadic series of shoddily thrown together television specials. Though a small number of compilation films did briefly bring the tunes back to the big screen, they had lost much of their star power. And while most of these productions made use of newly animated linking segments, what Warners wanted was all new, entirely original Looney Adventures. On the back of the then popular babification TV craze, then Warner president Terry Semmel concocted an idea to inject new life into the tunes and Warner animation. A baby Looney Tunes movie titled Tiny Tunes. That's T-U-N-E-N. S, starring either younger versions of the Looney crew or their infant offspring. Impressed by his hit record with family blockbusters and surely aware of his Roger Rabbit project then in production, Semmel knew Spielberg was the man for the job. Approached in early 1987, Spielberg loved the idea of creating something within the Looney world, but wasn't interested in working with existing characters. He said, I wanted to be involved involved with the realisation of some new characters for the 90s and into the next century. Ecstatic over Spielberg's potential involvement, the studio submitted, stipulating that classic tunes would appear as side characters in the film. Discussions lasted a couple of years, and eventually creatives realised that their ideas were larger than a single movie. Spielberg instead envisioned Tiny Tunes as a television series, which could present numerous short stories per episode, essentially cartoon shorts inspired by the classic Warner Tunes. It was something he believed could reach a broader audience. By now, Roger Rabbit had opened and was causing a global stir. As the LA Times astutely observed, Spielberg was able to use the film's momentum to sell his vision. Tom Ruger, soon hired as Tiny Toons producer, noted that Spielberg had the clout to make short cartoons at a time when everybody was saying, don't even bother making them. In late 1988, Warner Brothers officially put Tiny Toons into production as a TV series, appointing Gene McCurdy to oversee the project in the role of Warner Animation President. Soon after, at the 1989 Cannes Film Festival, the series was announced, with large fanfare made over the first ever collaboration between Warner Brothers and Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment. 
This promo artwork featuring a bunny tentatively named Bitsy was showcased. According to Ruger, it's the one and only official piece of art commissioned with the Tiny Tunes title. Regardless, once development began, Ruger claims that the first thing Steven did was change the title from Tiny Tunes to Tiny Tunes. That's T-O-O-N-S. It said that the change was an homage to Roger Rabbit, which featured cartoon characters referred to as Toons living in Toontown. It's also quite possible that the musical connotation of the word Tunes, given to the very first Warner cartoons because of their musical nature, was both irrelevant and confusing in the new era. Soon the final title, Tiny Toon Adventures, was settled upon. A team was swiftly assembled, with producer Ruger and writer, story editor Paul Dini both leaving Hanna-Barbera for the chance to work with Steven Spielberg. The entire roster of Tiny Toons was settled upon in only three days, in a series of meetings with McCurdy, Ruger, some artists, and Spielberg, who had final approval on everything. It was decided that the series leads would be young characters similar to the Looney Tunes, but not the tunes themselves. There was Buster Bunny, an energetic blue and white rabbit who led the show, Babs Bunny, a demure pink and white rabbit and eventual love interest to Buster. But don't worry, even though they share the same surname, they have no relation. There was Plucky Duck, a madcap and often envious green duck, and Hampton J. Pig, an easily bothered piglet, often playing the straight man against Plucky's antics. A large roster of supporting characters surrounded them. Almira Duff, Montana Max, Furball, Sweetie Pie, Calamity Coyote, Little Beeper, Dizzy Devil, Shirley the Loon, Gogo Dodo, Lil Sneezer, and many, many more. Clearly, the lineup mimicked that of Warner's classic Looney Tunes, not only in their appearances, but in their personalities and relationships. It was a great way to introduce audiences to new characters while retaining a brand familiarity. Spielberg noted in the LA Times piece, we've created what some people might consider the offspring of the Looney Tunes characters, or maybe just their distant cousins. In the same article, Ruger mentioned that Spielberg wanted to carry on their irreverence and make Looney Tunes for the 90s. Dini noted that it was important for the characters to have their own peculiarities, allowing them to be put in more contemporary situations. Naturally, the Looney Tunes crew were given prominent roles throughout the series, which found its setting at Acme Luniversity, the premier institution of higher hijinks learning. Here, the Tiny Tunes found themselves under the tutelage of the classic crew, who acted as mentors to their respective youngsters. Under the Looney Tunes, the Tiny Tunes would take courses in wisecracks, hard knocks, outwitting, spotlight stealing, cartoon logic, props and physical comedy, villain whopping, wild takes, destruction, toon physics, exploding cakes, and more. Ultimately, the Tiny Toons would earn the Diploma of Lunacy, graduating as qualified cartoon characters. Much like the classic cartoons, Tiny Toons was a vestibule through which artists could pay homage to and parody the era's pop culture landscape. Amongst the eclectic array of satires featured throughout the series were movies like Star Wars, Citizen Kane, Superman, Batman, The Toxic Avenger, Universal's classic Monsters franchise, Real Window, and Spielberg's own Indiana Jones and E.T. the Extraterrestrial series like Star Trek, Peanuts, Tales from the Crypt, Saturday Night Live, I Love Lucy, I Dream of Jeannie, The Simpsons, and The Mickey Mouse Club. And literary favourites from Shakespeare, Jules Verne, Edgar Allan Poe, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and the wide world of fairy tales. Celebrities who found themselves lampooned included the likes of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Cher, Julia Roberts, Jack Nicholson, Meryl Streep, 
Clint Eastwood, Roseanne Barr, Tim Burton, Mike Tyson, George Bush and even Spielberg, who voiced himself in an episode. Well, I just got a script from three hot young writers, eighth graders in fact, it's called Buster and Babs Go Hawaiian. Spielberg in fact was highly involved with the series as a hands-on producer. Entertainment Weekly noted that he micromanaged every step of the production process, approving every character, every script, every storyboard, every background design and every voiceover. He gave input into stories and gags, even submitting some himself. Ruger credited Spielberg with some very wild ideas. Spielberg also assisted casting director Andrea Romano in finding the incredible team of voice artists who came on board to bring the characters to life. Handpicked from over 1200 actors, Spielberg was insistent that Tiny Toons looked like a movie, not a TV show. He wanted to avoid the appearance of the choppy, cheap looking Saturday morning cartoons of the era, insisting on more frames to allow for a smoother movement, closer to theatrical animation. He asserted that the cartoons would look more cinematic and be funnier if animators employed live action camera techniques. Ruger noted that Spielberg was very concerned about the look of the series because after all his name is on the marquee. Sparing at no expense, at least $25 million was spent on the first season, then a gigantic budget for TV animation. Much like the classic tunes, Warner set up individual units with specific directors, story people and layout people to which individual cartoons were assigned. Writer Dinny called it a great process of discovery. A typical episode was broken into three cartoons, though some featured two and others presented one full length adventure. Two music parody episodes featured five and seven cartoons respectively. Each episode was strung together by linking segments, often short gag pieces or parodies. An incredible team of writers were also assembled for the series, who worked hard at injecting the pure insanity of the Looney Tunes into the new characters and situations. Unlike the visually oriented classic tunes, writers wanted to make their stories more script oriented, making way for clever, sharp humour and satire and deep heartfelt moments. That said, Tiny Tunes were allowed their moments of pure lunacy and madcap craziness. The final touch in emulating the classics was Spielberg's insistence that the show be given an orchestral score, with music especially composed for each episode. Composer Bruce Broughton was hired to write the theme song and act as a supervising composer, building a family of nearly 30 composers to pen scores for the cartoons. The scores were recorded with a 26 piece orchestra on the Eastwood scoring stage at Warner Studios, the same used by composer Carl Stalling for the original Looney Tunes. Composer Steve Bernstein recalled, it had that sound that the room had at the time, the piano was still the same and the acoustics were identical. Plus, we were writing in the same style that Carl Stalling wrote in. McCurdy described Broughton as having the Carl Stalling sensibility, and almost everyone credits the music as having a huge impact on the show's quality. Tiny Toon Adventures premiered on September 14, 1990, with the pilot episode, The Looney Beginning, broadcast as a primetime special on CBS. The series proper then aired on weekdays in first run syndication, with 65 episodes running across 13 weeks. The show was a hit with audiences and critics, achieving its ultimate goal by helping to spark a Looney Tunes revival. Viewership was so good that it topped the rating charts in some markets, outranking the lauded Disney Afternoon series and the phenomenal Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. At the 1991 Daytime Emmys, Tiny Toon Adventures walked away with three awards, including Outstanding Animated Program, Steven Spielberg's first ever Emmy. For the occasion, Ruger and other members of the crew presented Spielberg with the award on the set of his family adventure movie, Hook. The Tiny Toons pilot episode was also nominated for Outstanding Animated Program at the 1991 Primetime Emmys, though lost to The Simpsons. 
Due to the series' extreme popularity, a new batch of episodes was commissioned, with the 13 episode season 2 premiering in first run syndication six months after the end of season 1, in September 1991. In early 1992, Tiny Toon Adventures How I Spent My Vacation released direct to video on both VHS and Laserdisc. The 80 minute film, following the Tiny Toons on wacky adventures during their summer vacation had been in production since season 1, and was originally intended as a theatrically released series finale. However, Spielberg insisted on a direct-to-video release, believing animated features to be ideally suited for repeat viewings. The film was actually the first feature-length animation to release direct-to-video in America, an idea so unusual at the time, some consumers assumed it was simply a compilation of old episodes. In fact, the movie essentially featured four 20-minute segments strung together, which were later aired as individual episodes. Written and directed by series mainstays, Vacation maintained an expected quality, and with a reasonable budget, was afforded a slight uptick in visual excellence. Despite some criticism from critics, it was, naturally, hugely popular with fans of the show. Many even consider it one of the best DTV animations ever produced. Naturally, a third season followed in September 1992 with a further 20 episodes. This season saw the series' biggest change, with Charlie Adler replaced by John Casser as Buster, following a quarrel with producers. Concurrently with Season 3, the Tiny Toons' first spin-off, The Plucky Duck Show, aired. The series only produced one original episode, its pilot, The Return of Bat Duck, with the remaining episodes simply compilations of Plucky Central Tiny Toons cartoons. Audiences cottoned onto the ploy fairly quickly, and viewership was low, leading to its untimely cancellation after only 13 episodes. Following the cancellation, Return of Bat Duck was repurposed as a Tiny Toons Season 3 episode. With the conclusion of Season 3, Tiny Toons came to an end, with a full-length Christmas special parodying 1946 Frank Capra classic It's a Wonderful Life. Though still popular at the time, the series was shelved in favour of a brand new collaboration between Amblin and Warners, Animaniacs, once again spearheaded by Spielberg and Ruger. Likewise, hugely successful, Animaniacs would run between 1993 and 1998 for 99 episodes and a DTV movie. More than 20 episodes, in fact, featured cameo appearances from various Tiny Toons characters, including Buster, Babs, Plucky, Hampton, Fifi, Furball, Shirley, and Elmira. Tiny Toons did, however, return for two one-hour primetime specials in the middle 90s. 1994's Tiny Toons Spring Break saw the gang on a trip to Florida for the Easter holiday, and featured cameos from the Animaniacs. And 1995's Tiny Toons Night Ghoulery was a parody of anthology series Night Gallery, featuring spoofs of various horror movies and series. Night Ghoulery was also nominated for Outstanding Animated program at the 1995 Primetime Emmys, losing once again to The Simpsons. All up, including specials, Tiny Toon Adventures ran for 100 episodes, consisting of 244 segments plus a DTV movie. If we're to count the four episodes separated from the movie, not included in official episode lists, that's 104 episodes. Overall, the series pocketed seven daytime Emmys, including two for Outstanding Animated Program, plus an additional nomination in the category, three for Outstanding Music Direction and Composition, one for Outstanding Original Song, awarded for Broughton's theme tune, and one for Outstanding Writing in an Animated Program. Between the 1990s and early 2000s, Tiny Toons also saw mass merchandising, with a seven-issue quarterly magazine published by DC Comics, a 30-issue Marvel UK comic series, as well as occasional cameos in DC Comics' 59-issue Animaniacs comic series. The Tiny Toons also starred in a range of almost 20 video games for various consoles. 
Following the success of Animaniacs, Spielberg and Ruger developed spin-off series Pinky and the Brain, which premiered in 1995 and continued the adventures of the pair of wannabe world-dominating mice. Following studio pressure to lighten up the series, it was retooled as Pinky, Elmira and the Brain in 1998, which saw the mice as pets of Tiny Toons' animal-loving Elmira Duff. Designed by the studio as a more traditional animated sitcom like The Simpsons, this change was at the behest of the creators, who quickly distanced themselves from the series. Spielberg was particularly unhappy with the Tiny Toons and Animaniacs universes clashing in such a major way. The revamped series was, unsurprisingly, a bomb and was cancelled after only 13 episodes. Though the Tiny Toons had taken their final bow, for now, it's worth noting that that Baby Looney Tunes, a Looney Tunes babification series similar to the original Tiny Tunes movie concept, spawned 15 years later in 2002. It's unknown if this series drew from those early ideas, though it's unlikely to have been an entirely new and coincidental concept. There are almost certainly strands of DNA connecting the two. Fast forward 25 years after their last major appearance, and the Tiny Toons were back on the screen, albeit briefly, with Buster and Babs making a small cameo in the 2020 reboot of Animaniacs, during the Emmy Award winning Suffragette City musical number. With the Animaniacs reboot running for three seasons, it was a no-brainer that the Tiny Toons were to return. And in 2023, they have, in Tiny Toons' Lunar University, exclusive to the Max streaming service. This reboot returns the original crew, young and old, to Acme Lou, while introducing new characters into the mix, including Lola Bunny, who finally gives Bab a mentor of her own, and some of the more obscure Looney Tunes from the late 60s to Patty Freeling Seven Arts eras. Other changes include a controversial retconning of Buster and Babs as actual fraternal twins, making the classic joke. Buster and Babs Bunny, no relation. A little bit weird. Of the change, showrunner and co-executive producer Erin Gibson says, I wanted to dive into a brother-sister relationship that looked really symbiotic and collaborative and supportive, not antagonistic. Some, however, have suggested the retcon is an effort to remove romantic undertones from a children's series. Given these changes, it's been confirmed that Lunaversity is set in an entirely new timeline. Tom Ashheim, former president of Warner Brothers Global Kids, Young Adults and Classics, noted that Lunaversity captures all the clever, subversive and smart humour that made Tiny Toon Adventures such a standout series. It has, however, been given a contemporary edge with fresh humour and topical references. Lunaversity also takes on a more modern, angular art style similar to that of the Animaniacs reboot. As with Animaniacs 2020, Spielberg implemented strict guidelines to make Lunaversity faithful to the original, taking original designs and simply updating them. Again, he remained heavily involved in development, returning as executive producer and continuing to approve pictures, outlines, storyboards and scripts. So impressed with the work on the series, he's called it the best iteration of Tiny Toons he's ever seen. Unlike the original series, Lunaversity takes the form of a more traditional animated sitcom presenting full-length 20-minute stories. While some of the original voice actors return to their roles, Warners has chosen new voices for a majority of the characters. Lunaversity is currently set for two seasons of 26 episodes each, with the first 10 episodes available at premiere. So far, despite controversies, the series has been very well received by fans and critics. He is hoping the series gets picked up for even more and we can enjoy more tiny, toony, loony tuning adventures for the next few years. And at that, I want to know what is your favourite Tiny Toons episode, appearance and character? As always, join the conversation down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts.